All right. I was about to say good morning, but it's good evening for you. <laughs> <laughs> we are just about to record episode eight of Little Life, Big Loss. And today I am joined by a beautiful mama, Kate. She is actually based in Canada, which is so crazy. Um, and Kate reached out to me a few weeks ago on Instagram. Uh, she lost her little bubba the same month as us and we've been chatting. And so we thought, um, why not jump onto the podcast and share her story as well? So as usual, I try not to know too much about the story because I just want to organically have this conversation and um, be in the moment. So um, Kate, my first question for you, and as is the same for everyone, who were you before baby loss and when did your life change? Mm, it's a really good question. Um, before we had our daughter, Nora, I was a girlfriend. I've been with my partner, Sean, for just shy of three years now. Um, and I was a full-time house painter as well. That was my job. Cool. Um, yeah, a sister, a friend, you know, like, yeah. <laughs> like so many yeah. of us. Yeah. Um, and I was someone who was taken by surprise by our pregnancy. So I wasn't okay. necessarily someone who was in the position to be planning to be a mom anytime soon. Uh -huh. um, and I'm 27, which is, I was 26 when we found out that I was pregnant with Nora, which felt really young to me. I felt like a bit of a teen mom mm -hmm. for the longest time. <laughs> um, and... Yeah, quickly, I guess when my life changed was finding out that we were pregnant with her. Um, having that not have been the plan at all or the trajectory of, you know, the next few years of our lives as we had thought and um, just kind of immediately getting that, that positive test. I actually took three in a row because I was just like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Is this real? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Um, getting those those positives and immediately just feeling like I didn't know how we were going to make it work, but mm -hmm. just yeah, that that instantaneous like motherly protectiveness that I think mm -hmm. so many people can relate to. Yeah. Yeah. alongside fear like fear of whoa oh, I was yeah. not, ex <laughs> yeah. was not I expecting to this. that at all because yeah. that was that was definitely a factor yeah absolutely mm -hmm. and so how far along were you guys when you found out I was a little over five weeks mm -hmm. so yeah, pretty quickly so had, yeah so like five days late on my period and at that point <laughs> um I got like a long long history of I think I was telling you I was actually pursuing a diagnosis for endo um, just, you know, shortly before we found out we were pregnant with Nora and had finally, for the first time in my life, kind of had my first year or so of like actual regular cycles. Um, so at that point, being late, I felt meant something. So mm -hmm. sure enough. <laughs> Yeah, she was. Wow. yeah. And how long yeah. did it take you guys to kind of wrap your head around the fact that, you know, this was happening and that you were in fact excited? Oh, I mean, I feel like it happens at different rates for, you know, both partners. Um, mm -hmm. I kind of, I mean, we, we had every option laid out on the table, you know, of like course. I didn't want to, um, I didn't want to have Sean feel like he was forced into a position he wasn't ready for um and myself as well but I feel like that day I kind of knew like I don't know again I don't know how we're gonna do it but this is the path that we're on mm -hmm. um and I think it took Sean a little bit longer but he um he got on board pretty quickly and it takes mm -hmm. a long time for you to get used to that idea of for course sure. Especially yeah. when it's not your plan. It's not yeah. in the foreseeable future. Yeah, well, I mean, 
just with having had such a long history of reproductive health issues, like years and years of not having a regular cycle, Mm. motherhood wasn't something that I knew. I feel like some people know in their bones, they're just like, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to have a family. Um, And I didn't know whether that was going to be an option for me. So it really wasn't something that I had sat with Mm -hmm. in that way. Um, Yeah. And Sean is 10 years my senior, so he's 37 right now. And he kind of had gotten to that point in his life. Not that that is old by any means, but, Mm -hmm. you know, a lot of his friends had had kids by then. And um, he wasn't sure that it was something that was going to happen for him. So, yeah, Mm. it was um, a really big shift for both of us and for our relationship. Besides... um irregular periods what else was it that was alluding to the fact that you might have had endometriosis um I mean just years of like chronic debilitating period pain Mm. and all the things that come with that and you just you're told for so long you just had bad periods Mm -hmm. um and then there were the years where I didn't really get one or it would come every like three or four months and that was better because I wasn't in pain but it was still concerning you know yeah yeah Um, yeah so I had actually been finally got in to see a gynecologist here um in BC I grew up in Ontario and just sort of got lost in the healthcare system over there I feel um yeah I finally got in to see a gyno and he was like oh yeah like this is this is a thing and I think that you're at the point you know going on like 10 years of having had my cycle and have it not be regular or um comfortable (laughs) if you Mm -hmm. can say that I don't know if anyone's as comfortable but Mm. um but but there are my life so much yeah Mm. some people are I, I got my IUD put in the other day and I said to the nurse oh is it similar to period pain and she said oh I wouldn't know I don't get it and I thought, that blows Doesn't my mind. Pain. Yeah. <gasps> I only know my life as having excruciating pain. So for me, yeah. I was like, wow, I've been told my whole life this is normal, but it's not. <laughs> it's definitely not. So um, yeah. I'm, gl- I'm glad you'd been in to see a gyno, but it's it's crazy that we put up with it for, you know, they say seven plus years until a diagnosis usually. Yeah. Yeah. So. Which I feel like so many women I've spoken to, it's actually so much longer. Mm. Um, and then there are so many women who just, I mean, endo is like a newly recognized thing, right? Only in the past five or 10 years have they really started to lean into researching it. Yeah. Um, and I just think of like the millions, I want to say millions of women Mm -hmm. before us who have just lived with that until they were menopausal. And I still don't even know if that causes symptoms to subside in that many people either like I'm sure it just changes Um, well I'm not sure yeah because and mm -hmm. that's why I wanted to ask you before we even dive into anything else because I I, I'm super passionate about talking about endometriosis or painful periods or you Mm -hmm. know periods in general I'm always very open about it um I have a friend who's finished having her kids she was told at 19 she'd never have kids she has gone on to have three and she's my age I think she's 37 and she's going through this stage of debilitating pain again and she's like I don't want to have another surgery but I'm too young to have a hysterectomy because she doesn't want to go through menopause like it's just this constant lifelong thing and um yeah I really feel for her so I think that a hysterectomy slash menopause does is supposed to fix it you know, nine mm-hmm. times out of 10, but you know, what if it doesn't, it's like, it's hormonal. Right. And I just feel mm-hmm. like everyone's bodies, although there is like a predictable hormonal shift that happens through menopause, that looks very different in everyone's body. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's a long time too. Like, you know, it can take you like five or 10 years to fully get through menopause. that phase of menopause. <laughs> my sister has never had painful periods and now she's perimenopausal and now she's starting to get painful periods. It's like, what? I know. 
Can you win? Is anyone winning? (laughs) I know, I know. Oh my god. Being being female, huh? I just Yeah, it's wild out there. (laughs) (laughs) It is. And across the world, it's like hearing your story. I'm like, you're on the other side of the world and you're experiencing the same stuff. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's universal. mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it is so many more than what do they say? It's like one in ten or one in fifteen. I think way, way less. It's so many more. Yeah. 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 So tell me, once you, you know, you got your positive pregnancy test, you come to terms with it, it's this innate instant feeling that you're going to be a mom. Mm-hmm. And what did your pregnancy look like from there? Did you have a, a an easy pregnancy? What, what were your symptoms? Yeah, I feel like it was pretty textbook. And I was told, I was actually just thinking about it before, we got on like earlier this day, just how many people, you know, my OBs and my midwife were telling me textbook pregnancy, you know, I had a little bit of morning sickness, which is all day sickness. I don't know why they call it that (laughs) Um, through that first trimester, but I think it subsided after 10 weeks and was fully gone by 12. um, Yeah. Which is, You know, I know many people suffer with it a lot longer than that. So I felt really lucky. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yeah. 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 Um, I I vomited the entire pregnancy. You were like every day, hey? Mm Mm-hmm. So sick. Oh, Oh my God. I know. I know. That's brutal. Mm -hmm. Um, Again, hormonal. It's just a hormonal thing. (laughs) mm -hmm. (laughs) Yeah. Um. And so did you yeah, go for I mean, all your regular scans? Did you have blood tests? Do you have all of the, you know, ultrasounds and stuff? Yeah. Yeah, they get you on a program pretty early here. Um, so I went in, had my pregnancy confirmed at six weeks, which was early. Um, and the reason that I did that was because I was having some pain mm-hmm. really early on. This was like... I'm thinking of it now and it was one of the only things that was like kind of an outlier um Mm -hmm. and within that first like 12 week window as soon as you start reading anything they're just like oh well you know high chance for miscarriage inside those first 12 weeks and it goes down every week Mm -hmm. um but that was my first thought was just like oh my god am I miscarrying I had just Mm. started to get used to the idea of becoming a mom and was just like oh god um that where I was worried that it was um a complication to do with maybe having endometriosis and I went in and they did a scan so I got a six-week scan before your regular like we do a a 10-week scan here is like the first one that most people get um yeah and that's just kind of like a preliminary anatomy scan Mm -hmm. um so I got my little ultrasound. She's like a little grain of rice on there mm-hmm. is what the ultrasound mm-hmm. tech did, had said. And um, she was doing great. Everything was fine. I had my regular 10-week checkup after that. Um, you, you could see her heartbeat at week seven? Week six, week would, seven is, yeah, so week six, week seven is when they normally can find the heartbeat. I remember it being a tiny flicker on the screen. Mm-hmm. Um, just tiny but yeah it's like that feeling is so crazy when you see that Mm -hmm. um but yeah everything was really good other than that nausea which was you know to be expected I know some people don't get it some people get it horribly Mm -hmm. um and the rest of it like we pretty well sailed through I worked like house painting is a manual labor job I worked until I was 37 weeks wow and was fine like got really achy toward the end with Uh all the regular the regular aches and pains of pregnancy and um I wasn't like comfortable anymore by that last (laughs) that last Uh week of work for sure but you're like trying to hold the belly up you're like oh my god I had overalls to do that it was just like (laughs) suspended um (laughs) which they were like, I couldn't even do up the side buttons by the end. It was not, not a very cute look, but we got (laughs) I was about to say it would look so cute, but. (laughs) Oh my God. I think it was cute. Like second trimester, I felt really cute. And then by the end, I was just like, oh my gosh. 
<laughs> um, I hate you. I didn't even really, I didn't get too big. I felt like everyone was saying I was looking so much smaller than I was. Mm-hmm. Um, how far along I was just because I'm quite tall so I carried really high yeah um, but yeah I think all the regular scans and things um, everything was good I ended up going for one like extra non-stress test I think I was mm-hmm. around 30 weeks or so I was dehydrated. I had like come in to a doctor's appointment at like five o'clock after work. Just I had smashed out an extra day on my week. So I was only working four day weeks this whole time. Um, and it, like I knew, like I was like, I'm not in the best of shape right now. So yeah, baby's heart rate was high and they were just, you know, they okay. worried, sent me for that. Everything was good. Yeah. Um, And then we also had an extra growth scan and this was the same OB that had ordered it. And she ended up actually being the one who um, was there when I went in to hospital when I was in labor. Mm -hmm. And I kind of felt like, you know, she sent me for this extra scan, had to take time from work. I was just like, I don't think it's necessary. Like I know she's good. She was moving a ton and like, she was like, I feel the doctor was saying, you know, it's probably just that she's really curled up in there. That might be why you're measuring a little bit behind. It was only like a week or two. And that ended up being the case. Like everything on the ultrasound was fine. They're like, she's great. She's growing. Mm. Um, So yeah, no, no concerns other than that through to the end. It was, it was textbook. And And um, so um, I'm just curious. When did you find out that it was a girl? Did you have like a gender reveal or? We didn't, not formally. Um, It did happen toward the end that my midwife had kind of let slip. Like she said she a couple times. Oh no! And we were very adamant the whole time. Like my mom had four kids and never found out with any of us. And I just Uh felt like that was the thing to do. I thought it was really cool. (laughs) Yeah. I would just tell people like, it's one of the last true mysteries that mm, mm-hmm. you know we can have in this life anymore um in a world where you can know anything yeah so yeah we really held to that but I had a feeling and um you know we had friends that were due a little over a month after us and a lot of the time it would end up they had been in there like right before we would go in to see the same midwife and I remember her saying just like oh, you know, like she had just seen us. Maybe she was just tired and like got it mixed up. And I was like, no, I feel. <laughs> yeah, she knows. Feel like we know. She acts it. Yeah, yeah. And it's funny because like um, my parents being back home, they're on the other side of the country in Ontario. And so they hadn't actually seen me through any of my pregnancy. Um, didn't get to go home. They were so sure it was going to be a girl. I had that feeling early on. And then mm-hmm. I kind of lost it. I was like, I got girl vibes. And then I was like, I don't know. It could be. Then, you, then you're like, I just really don't know. <laughs> could be anything. So we didn't find yeah. out until she was delivered. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So textbook pregnancy, you went all the way through. Um, you were just waiting to go into natural labor, mm-hmm. like spontaneous labor. Yeah. Okay. And talk us, talk us through that. Yeah. So... Oh, the one thing I will say is that same midwife had told me I went in on my last day of work, which I was 37 weeks that day, had an appointment with her afterward. And she, you know, took one look at me in the way that I was carrying at that time. And she's like, you're not going to make 40 weeks, hun. Like, Okay. And I had I had worked an extra week. I was originally going to take a month off before I was due. Yeah. Was feeling good, decided to take that extra week. And then at the end of that week, she's telling me, like, you know, you could go in, saying? like, 10 days. Yeah, she's right. giving me numbers. So she was, just, she was just, she was engaged. Is that what she meant? Like, baby yeah. was low? Yeah. Yeah, and she had been for, like, what I felt was a really long time leading into that. They would just yeah. tell me that she was low and you mm. could feel it, you know, okay. as well. 
Millie, um, Millie, Millie never engaged and went down, and she never kicked or punched or anything. So for no. me, I, I, yeah, I don't, I don't was know that feeling. Was she breached though? Do mm-hmm. I remember that right? Yeah. Yeah, she was breached. She was super high. She was right up here, and then by the end, oh, she was actually goodness. transverse. She was sideways. Oh yeah. So, which is why we were booked in for the cesarean, but we still didn't right. know anything was wrong. We just, yeah, just thought she didn't want to turn. Yeah, which is just. I know. In hindsight. Insane. Yeah. <laughs> and oh, so you God. felt Nora kicking and punching and moving and. Oh, she was super active. Um, mm-hmm. You know, they tell you it's like 10 movements in inside of an hour is like mm-hmm. what they tell you. I don't yeah. think like knowing what I know now, that's not a hard and fast rule. And I think it's quite outdated. Yeah. It's kind of what I've read in the research. Um, they tell you now it's like much more uh useful and like wise to actually just know what's normal for your baby um Mm -hmm. but I never had any concerns because she was so active the whole time like she's kicking me all the time at work Mm -hmm. um I never did a proper kick count with her because I was just like she was moving so constantly that I was like you're good (laughs) you're all good yeah you're moving you're You're there Mm -hmm. yeah when I think about it now um and I've kind of had this conversation a number of times and you know since she's been born she did slow down toward the end um and I did end up making it to 39 weeks and four days with her so she was due three days from when we had her um she did slow down in that last like few last like handful of days before I had her and I remember telling the last appointment that I had with my birth team because we get we get four OBs and a midwife wow um or three OBs and a midwife pardon me Mm -hmm. and then it's like they're each on rotation for a week through the month so okay it just depends on when you end up going into hospital is like who you end up with but you're never with a stranger you've met them wow. all had appointments with them the whole time yeah it's, and this is yeah. in, this is in the public system this is a public system yeah um and we're really small it's I live in like a little ski town but mm-hmm. it's like 10 maybe 12,000 people full-time so it's quite wow. a small center and the fact that we have access to that kind of care at our like pretty rural hospital is Mm -hmm. amazing like we're we're just so lucky for that um but anyways I remember going in at 36 weeks and telling the OB that I saw then you know like she's kind of slowing down she's still moving a lot but Mm. it was less than she had been and um she was like oh yeah like that's totally fine she was kind of like oh they run out of room which Mm -mm. so many people have told me since then is just absolutely not true not true um yeah I mean we we weren't given any reason to worry but it kind of was like a little light went on for me that I was like "Mm." yeah you know but yeah so reassured that I didn't which is so hard because I think yeah It's so hard because I I look back to and think, you know, so many times I said, Millie just doesn't move much, you know, like I feel that there's, they're like, do you feel her? Well, of course, there's a a large human inside of me. I feel her, but I don't feel what I think I should feel. And we were given kind of opposite advice where it's, you don't do the 10 counts per hour because it's just based on you what is normal for Millie what is normal Mm. for your pregnancy it is my first pregnancy I had the anterior placenta you know all the things I was just reassured as well so do I feel like I felt something was wrong I got it I don't know you know how do we know but but I did also feel similar to you when compare no but yeah it's so hard it's so hard I know and like hindsight is 2020 right of course mm-hmm. you're like combing back through your memory looking for anything that could have yeah you know tipped you off to something going wrong and mm-hmm. um you know I think you'll 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 hold on to anything and unfortunately a lot of it is like you're playing the blame game with yourself 
yeah feel like i should have clued in you know mm -hmm. but yeah why didn't i why didn't i ask more questions why didn't i question yeah totally yeah I've, yeah been through it a thousand yeah. times in my head i know same yeah um so you had, we were yeah, so, about her, yeah, yeah. So, so you're thirty nine point four. You know, she's due in a couple mm -hmm. of days. You have this appointment. You're reassured that you know her her reduced movements is okay. Mm -hmm. She's running out of space, quote unquote. <laughs> yeah. um, and so then, what happens? So, um, finished up work, which was you know I was feeling it by the end of that, and mm -hmm. ended up having like a little over two weeks that I was able to just finally sit and do the nesting that I want to do and, and just like washed all the clothes and folded them and put them away mm. we got our room set up we live in like this little rental and so her room was going to be our room mm -hmm. as well for you know until we could find a bigger place um and I just loved I remember loving finally getting to be in that space that I could do that because I'd just been so busy with work up until then that yeah you know um those were really beautiful um last weeks that we had with her I was out like walking my dog every day and like I was still hiking I was hiking the day before I wow. had her like out yeah. to this little spot on the river and I would swim mm. every day Go you. It just felt so good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was great. I, yeah, I felt really lucky mm -hmm. to be able to do that. Um so yeah, just it was a waiting game at that point. And yeah. um I remember going to sleep the night before we had her because she was born in the morning. Mm -hmm. And I remembered having like those achy period like pains that mm -hmm. so many people report and I had listened to like probably three or four hundred birth stories wow. back through yeah. it was all uh -huh. I would listen to at work was yeah. like just in my headphones I would listen to like eight hours of them a day like a crazy <laughs> person so I was just like I just I'm someone who does my research and I was just like I want to know like every single version of how this can go yeah um so I felt so informed by all these women mm -hmm. just like okay this is what to look for because you're like oh my god like if you're planning to go into natural labor you do end up going into natural labor it's like what is that going to be like um so I remembered having cramps and I was just like oh yeah okay she's coming I had had uh -huh. really bad Braxton Hicks for like months with her up until then Okay. I think just because I was working so actively, my body yeah. was trying to tell me to back off. Uh -huh. um, <laughs> yeah, you didn't yeah. listen. <laughs> no, I mean, there just wasn't, there wasn't space to really. But hey, I also, wasn't you like, felt great. So if you yeah, feel great, keep going. Yeah, exactly. And like, otherwise everything was good. So I knew that I wasn't like, you know, wasn't you, you didn't over push it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Um, anyway, I had had these Braxton Hicks and I just knew this feeling was very different. So I was just like, okay, mm -hmm. you know, we'll just wait. Went to bed, I think like 11 o'clock or so. I didn't tell Sean because I was like, this could go on for days. Like, I don't want to psych him out. And he was still working. Uh -huh. Um, he was just trying to work until we had her essentially just to have as much you know, time off with us as he could. Mm -hmm. um, and then I remember waking up around three o'clock the next morning and it was like um, really intense cramping. Like you couldn't sleep through it mm -hmm. um, anymore. So I was just like, okay, I'm going to get up and to see if I can get an idea of like, you know, the timing of these things and mm -hmm. try and get some food into me because I don't know I could be in for a long haul. And um, so yeah, I just like hung out by myself and was like laboring 
You're so brave. Just sort of all over the house. Yeah, I didn't want to bother Sean, so I was just like, it could be hours before they get regular. Mm -hmm. But I remember it wasn't until that morning I actually downloaded, like, a contraction timer. And I was like, oh, shit, Mm -hmm. I don't actually have an app (laughs) for this. Yeah, yeah. Um, So I was looking at that, and they were, like, by, yeah, like, overnight, 3 a.m. when I woke up, they were coming pretty regularly, like, five minutes apart. I was just like, okay, <laughs> that feels like it's moving a bit fast, but I've just, oh my again, gosh. listened to so many people's stories. It's like, I could hold that for like 18 hours. Like we don't right. know. Um, so I had a little bit of breakfast and then I was like bouncing on my birthing ball uh, and timing yeah. them Uh huh. just in the dark by myself. <laughs> um, How and they powerful. Got- That's like admirable yeah that's powerful i mean i was also you. like really spooked too i was just like oh god like it's happening absolutely um but i i did love having that time to just mm-hmm. like really feel into it um yeah anyway they within like an hour and a bit i think i woke sean up at like five yeah a bit in like five o'clock because i was just like okay they're like mm-hmm they're coming closer together they were like four minutes three minutes and I was like okay maybe (laughs) because like two hours feels like really fast for it to progress to that point um Mm. and I was kind of like I feel like I just want to go in and get checked and let them know that we're coming and today is probably the day so I woke up Sean and we got some things together I didn't I had like a bit of a hospital bag packed but not everything so we're just like okay throw all this stuff together uh-huh. and um we headed in and I just remember we live across train tracks and there's like just any time you're trying to be on time for anything um living where we live inevitably there is a train and like all leading up until Nora's birth I was like I just know there's gonna be a train the day that we have her and we're trying to go to the hospital because like uh-huh. I just know it what, there you wasn't can't drive one. through? Like, can you not drive there's through a the way, train? There's a way around, but it's, like, a really bumpy, unmaintained <laughs> road. And I was like, <laughs> there's going to be a train, and I'm going to be in labor, and we're going to have to, like, fly over all these bumps. Oh, my gosh. Um, But there wasn't a train, and I was just like, okay, cool. Yay, thank you. Everything is, like, happening in the best way possible and you know we drove up to the hospital small town we live like maybe six or seven minutes away Mm -hmm. um and just like hanging on all through that ride and the sun was coming up you know it was like a beautiful summer morning the mountains all turned pink and um I just remember looking at Sean and being like you know today's our baby's birthday (laughs) oh my gosh oh Um, honey yeah (sighs) and it was (laughs) it was her birthday um we get up to the hospital and the main doors aren't open yet they don't open till like seven so if you're before seven or after seven a.m. or p.m. you have to go around to emergency so I had to go in through emerge and I just remember getting out and standing you have to like ring a doorbell for the nurse to come and get you Mm -hmm. and she's just like you know what's going on and I'm like doubled over just like I'm in labor (laughs) like I need I'm like, like actively, heavily, but it's this, yeah. yeah for sure I'm in it I'm standing there like heavily pregnant and I was just like what do you think is happening <laughs> <laughs> but she's like okay oh, she was so great like brought us upstairs into labor and delivery and it was super quiet up there I remember like all the lights were still off and um they have like two birthing well, there's like one main birthing suite and then a couple of other rooms that are set up in case there does end up being more than one on that day. But like I said, it's a really small town. Yeah. Um, I think there were only eight babies due in July. Wow. Like, Your whole town. Our practice was saying. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. Um, and everyone else had had their babies already. Everyone's came early. So mm. I was the last one. Mm. And I was just like, okay. 
This is a good feeling knowing it's probably just going to be me unless someone with a, you know, an August baby comes early. <laughs> uh huh. Because what date in July was this? It was July 24th. Yeah. And she was yeah. due on the 27th. So she was three days early. Yeah. Um, we get up there and I was like, you know, walking down the hallway, I had to stop a couple of times to breathe through contractions. And I just remember one of the nurses saying like, you know, she's kind of doing intake questions with me. And she's like, is this your first baby? I was like, yeah. She's just like, you are breathing through it. Like, this is not your first baby. She's like, you sound uh, like a pro, you know, like yeah. you got this. Um, and that, that just made me feel so good. I was just like, Whoa. yeah, <laughs> you're like, I've researched the heck out of this. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> um, get into the birthing suite and I'm like on the ball and you know, they got me on the bed and checked out baby stats. Cause we still didn't know for sure whether she was a girl, although we have kind oh, of been yeah. tipped off before, like I said, uh -huh. um, and you know we were both sounding really good they're like she's low she got a good strong heartbeat and you're gonna meet your baby today um so they timed my contractions and yeah they had them come in like four minutes apart and pretty consistent they were like 30 seconds to a minute long so you know my body was doing really good work Mm -hmm. um and Nora was too mm. um so we hung out there for a little while waited for my OB to get there because they call them in right like there's okay they're yeah. not just like hanging around and it was like 6 30 7 o'clock I think she got there at 7 or shortly after 7 um and it's so funny, like of all the doctors in the on my birth team, not I absolutely would have been totally happy to have any of them. They're all like amazingly experienced, really warm people. Mm. Um, but I definitely had two others that I had like really hoped for, and we missed their shift by like a day. Like I was like, oh. oh. You know, I'm going to have Dr. Rennie, who is so wonderful. And, like, looking back, I am so glad that it was her. Mm -hmm. um, she was the one that had sent me for those extra tests. And I was just like, oh, okay, kind of a wet blanket lady. But she's just, like, you know, <laughs> very conservative, very cautious. And ultimately, I really appreciate that about her. Mm -hmm. um, just knowing what we know now. Um, so we're hanging out in labor and delivery. And... Dr. Rennie gets there and she checks me and she's like, you know, you're, you're doing well. She's like, you're two and a half centimeters. So you still got a ways to go. And I was mm -hmm. just like, so devastated to know that I wasn't even like four or five. Cause I just felt they were so regular. Mm. I was like, surely, like, yeah, surely I'm we're moving there. along. And like <laughs> two and a half is not anything to slow to either. Like it's, mm -hmm. you know, we were, we were going, but She's like, you seem like you're coping really well. Um, and I think if you wanted to, like, you don't have to stay here. You could go home. So she's like, let's just, you know, get you into the computer and, um, you know, get ourselves set up because we're having a baby today. But she's like, I think, you know, if you wanted to, you could go home, you could like run the bath, which just sounded so good to me. Yeah. Um, and she's like, yeah, we'll, we'll get that sorted and we'll see how you're doing in a little bit. And she went away. Oh my God. I actually, I remember saying to her, like, it's so cold in here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and Sean was just like handing me my socks and like my sweater and stuff. Um, so it was July. I had come in in like a t-shirt <laughs> and it was so yeah. cold in the birthing suite. And she's like, you know, you know, you're going to get really hot <laughs> when it, when it gets down to it. She's like, you're going to think it's really warm in here. Okay. Um, I just remember mentioning that to her and 
she had actually gone away to see if she could find the thermostat to turn it up for me so I'd be more comfortable. Yeah. So she was gone for like a half hour. Um, and she came back and she's just like, okay, you know, we're going to have a look at your birth plan. We read through that together because I was, you know, that girl that had typed out mm-hmm. a couple Mm-hmm. two-page document <laughs> I'm just like all my birth preferences and I was like yeah. I had written up my preferences for like every single thing and so um luckily you know we're reading through it together and she's like so many of these things are just our standard of care you know we're not okay. going to have you on the monitors the whole time we want you to be able to move around um yeah. I really wanted to be able to get up and walk and like use the bath and not be on my back on the bed because I just knew that wasn't going to be comfortable for me yeah um and she's like absolutely you know she's like we support all of this and then I had one little section at the end that was titled just in case shit goes sideways (laughs) here are my preferences for if we have to have a c-section and I asked you know of course depending on the circumstances I was like I would really like to be awake and observe like a gentle Mm -hmm. cesarean protocol as much as possible and skin to skin right away if I'm in shape to do it. And, you Mm -hmm. know, I had collected colostrum. Mm -hmm. Sean had brought it with him in a cooler. (laughs) Yeah. Um, You know, to, to have that on standby in case I wasn't able to feed her right away and just everything. And, you know, Dr. Rennie read through that and she just looks at me and she's like, this is so great. And she's like, absolutely. If, if everything is going well for you and baby, then we can make all of this happen. But she looked at me and she's like, we're not doing that today. Oh. She's like, you know, you're doing really well. Yeah. Um, and she was like, okay, well, she's like, do you feel like you'd like to go home? And I was like, if you think that that's a possibility for us right now then like totally we'd like to be in our own home and just Mm -hmm. hanging out until everything gets more intense and she's like okay awesome she's like I'm gonna check you again she went away to get some things and in the meantime had the um, labor and delivery nurse um you know, do the preliminary checks with the Doppler and stuff like that. Um, And I just remember she couldn't find her on the Doppler. And she's just like, okay, you know, she's like, these things are kind of, you know, hit or miss. And she's just like, I think she's gone really low. Like she's super engaged and I just, I can't find her in the spot that she was before. And I think it's cause she's just moved on down. Um, and she's like, we'll just wait for Dr. Rennie. And she came right back and she had to go at it. And I just, her face was like white. And I could tell, and she's like, okay, well, she's just like, you know, they're talking and I don't remember exactly what was said, but they're like, there was another OB from the practice, not one of my OBs, he's on the other birth team. Um, But they're like, you know, Dr. Bachelor's in the hall, go grab him and, you know, bring the portable ultrasound. He comes in, he's in like shorts and flip flops, was not meant to be working that day I don't even know why he was there wow but he wheels in the ultrasound and um I'm still on the bed having contractions (laughs) like just trying to stay still for them to do this and Mm -hmm. um I just remember like they get the ultrasound going and I could see the screen um and they're looking and he didn't he didn't say anything at first. He just looked at Dr. Rennie and Dr. Rennie looked at him. He's just like, we need to get downstairs right now. Like to surgery. Um, he's like, How long has it been? And they didn't know because it had been a half hour since we had checked her, which is protocol. Mm-hmm. Um, 
and in so many other circumstances is totally fine is what everyone would ask for because they don't mm-hmm. want to be strapped down with the monitors yeah um so they were completely respecting our wishes and I just remember like a stone <laughs> and I like I saw the screen and where there had been movement on every other scan that we had seen and where her heart was supposed to be was just dark. Um, So they're wheeling me downstairs and, you know, I was just like staring up at the ceiling. I didn't know where Sean was. I didn't know if he made it in the elevator with us or if they held him back. I just was like, we have to go. Um, And, um, oh gosh. We got down to surgery and I remember they wheeled me into one OR and then they're like, no, we have to, you know, other one. And they backed me out and wheeled me into the other one. And they're like stripping me down and nobody was talking to me. Like, I knew what was happening and I was just like, (sighs) everything just felt so out of control. (sighs) And I just remember thinking like, this is not, this is not the way it was supposed to go. This is not the way that this is what we're doing. And, you know, they're like, they had like rolled me onto another like a surgical <sighs> gurney and they're like putting the arm boards down and you know strapping me to it and mm-hmm. uh, the first time anyone said anything to me um, <sighs> there was this beautiful nurse just like standing at my head and stroking my hair and she's just like you know I'm with you and she's explaining oh. she's like you're gonna have a c-section and you know, we're going to do the best we can. She's like, I'm here with you. And she's just patting my hair. And then I think it was the anesthesiologist came. I remember her being beside me over here. And she's just like, she knelt down and looked me in the eye. And she's just like, um, she's like, oh, you're still having contractions, aren't you? And I was like, yeah. And I was trying to stay still. Because they're like putting monitors on me and sloshing the iodine across my belly and um she's like okay she's like I think we have to put you out for this like she's like I don't think she's like we don't have time to wait to see (sighs) if an epidural will take like she's like we just gotta we just gotta put you out and I was like I remember saying to her, I was like, okay, let's do it. Like, let's do it. That's what yeah. I said. <laughs> it just sounds so silly <laughs> now, but that was all I could say. And it was like, I was just so thankful for her. You know, I'm looking at her and I was like, well, this isn't really an option that you're mm-hmm. presenting me, you know, but she was no. like inviting me to be part of it she's like this is what we got to do like are yeah. you on board and yeah and it's just like yeah and <sighs> they got the IV in my hand and I don't even think I heard her count to seven backwards mm. from ten and I was out <laughs> and um from the time that I was upstairs in labor and delivery to the time that they had me on the table and in surgery was like seven minutes. They were so fast. And um, this is the part that I didn't um, I didn't learn about until later, obviously, because I was out. Um, but they, you know, they, they got to her and she still didn't have a heartbeat and they worked on her for like 45 minutes and not once were they able to bring her back um 
Sean told me because they they brought him in after they had they had delivered her, and they made the decision to bring him into the OR and just have him be there so that he knew what was going on because I guess he had just been sitting outside like and he told me he was just waiting to hear her cry <laughs> and he said, um, they brought him in and you know they had her on the recess table and they were working on her and he said there was a I guess it was, it must have been a whiteboard that said, like, you know, heart rate at time of birth was zero. <sighs> and they had the timer going. Um, and it was already at, like, ten minutes when he got in there. <sighs> and he saw me, like, open on the table. They hadn't even uh... closed me up yet. I know, like, I can't even... <laughs> I can't even imagine what that was like for him. Um... God, they really, they really tried. Yeah. They really tried. Yeah. Um, and they had to, you know, they got to like the 45 minute mark and like, I just, I think now, you know, like, you, Brain damage is incurred after four minutes with no oxygen. Yeah. And they didn't even know how long that she hadn't been getting any. That her, you know, we didn't know how long it had been since her heart stopped. So it was like, <sighs> it could have been like 75 minutes and, you know, total. And they just wouldn't. Oh. There just wouldn't have been anything left. Yeah. You know, and they explained that to Sean because he was there. I was still out. Uh -huh. Thank God. I don't think I would have handled any of that particularly well, to be honest. And I just, I wish that I was there to be with him for yeah. that. I feel, you know, the nurses were with him, but it was like... He was alone. Um, and they had to ask him his consent to, to oh, stop their fuck. efforts. Yeah. Oh. You know, and they explained to him everything. He's just like, okay, you know, you can stop. Oh. And they <sighs> took her off of whatever machines that they had her hooked up to. And they cleaned her up and brought her to him. And I didn't, I didn't know this, but he got to hold her then. Um, the first time that we saw her together, I thought it had been the first time that he saw her, but it wasn't. Yeah. Um, And I have these photos um, that the nurses took of him holding her, mm. and he's like in his his like scrub cap, and they had given him like a lab coat to wear, and <sighs> he just looks so heartbroken. <laughs> um, and she just looked like. You know, she wasn't... Uh, we never got to see her skin, like, pink. Uh -huh. And I asked Sean if she was still warm. Yeah. That first time that he got to hold her, and he said no. Like, no. They'd had her on the warming table, but it wasn't, like... It wasn't, like, warmth from within her body, you know? Yeah. Um, so she just, she just looks like a little porcelain doll mm -hmm. in those photos. Yeah. 
Um, and I don't know, like, I don't actually know, sorry, properly, like how long it had, I don't know how much time had really passed from the time that she was delivered to when I woke up in recovery. Mm -hmm. She was born at 8.57. Um, is the time that they had written down. And I guess I was, I think I woke up around like 10.30. Yeah. So I'm missing that huge chunk of time. Yeah. Um, which still feels very weird, but um, you know, like I said, it, there wasn't anything for me to do. Yeah. And, and they did um, it for the safety probably of, absolutely. of yourself. And yeah. 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 And I mean, yeah, just like not being able to, to move or to do anything and being awake for that, you just feel so helpless. Mm -hmm. We already feel so helpless. But yeah. Yeah. Like... That is, um, I just picture Sean walking, like I picture him waiting for her to cry and then him walking in and he sees his, <sighs> you know, his girlfriend, his love, his partner on the table, like unconscious and cut open and then his baby, like it's just, that is, that is what nightmares are made of. Like that's, yeah. that's awful in every sense. How um, has he, how has Sean been? It's, it's like, you know, we just tell people that we're surviving. It's a lie to be like, oh, you know, he's okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, I have talked to him about it and he hasn't had, like, he's not having, like, nightmares or anything like uh -huh. that, which is, like, I'm so thankful because I go to sleep every night replaying it all and Mm -hmm. I'm sure, I'm sure he does in some capacity, but yeah. Um, I think for I a mom, I think, yeah. sorry, you continue, you go. No, that's okay. Um, I did speak to my OB, the one who was in labor and delivery with me, Dr. Rennie. I met with her a few weeks later and she just was like, you know, I, I talked to her about a little bit of what Sean had been able to tell me because it took him a long time to be able to speak about it. Um, and I said, you know, can you fill in the gaps for me in in his part of the story? And she did and gave me a little bit of a better idea of the timeline of things. And she just looked at me and she said, I hope that was the right decision was, you know, to bring him in there. And I know that even, I mean, he was awful. I know that he was glad to be there. Mm -hmm. You know, he couldn't, yeah. he couldn't do anything, but he felt like he's doing more than just sitting outside the doors, not knowing. Totally. And, yeah. you know, getting to have that time with her and, you know, that first lot of time and you were still asleep yeah. and, you know, he got to have that one-on-one -on -one dad and daughter time. And whilst the shittest decision ever for him to have to make, you know, he was there to make that decision and it's just, yeah. No, no dad, no dad would ever imagine that they have to go through that. No, no. And, and I yeah, think to go through it by himself too. Yeah. It's just, and I think one of the biggest things like before when we got, we got the option of labor taken off us because Millie was breech and mm -hmm. Dylan said, you know, you, do you feel like you're missing out? And I was like, no, do you? <laughs> and he was like, yeah. yeah, like he was super excited for labor. And I was like, labor scares me so much. Like I was mm. so scared of labor more than a cesarean. And I was 
strangely thinking like you know things can happen to the mum in labor like more than thinking of things happening to the baby and I just think so my vision with you know Sean in that instance is like you know we're not safe either you know which sounds really awful and negative but it's just like there's a lot that can go wrong you know like a lot you have to bear witness to it as a father you know Mm -hmm. it's not happening to you in that sense so mm-hmm. much I mean it is absolutely yeah but it's not physically, physically. Mm. yeah and I think that we um we discredit fathers a little bit in that way because mm-hmm. um, they just have to sit back and watch yeah yeah and you know try and be supportive but yeah when stuff goes sideways it's like I feel like so many fathers I've spoken to whose partners had a very straightforward labor and delivery Mm -hmm. felt helpless, Mm -hmm. you know, never mind if when something like that happens, it's just. I, I always imagine in these moments, like how traumatic it also is for the medical team. Like Mm -hmm. your OB had literally said to you, like, great birth plan. We're not going to need that. You're doing so well. Can you imagine the shock and the guilt and the trauma and how much she's replayed it over and over again? Like, yeah, you know, like. I spoke to her about that too in that meeting I had with her later mm -hmm. on. Um, You know, I asked her. Because it's a small hospital and I think, you know, she did residency elsewhere, but um, she's been here, like, pretty dedicated full time. And I just remember asking her how long she had been practicing and she said 18 years. And I was like, has this ever happened to you? Um, And she said no. She's like, in all the years that I've been practicing, she's like, we lost one other baby and it was very different circumstances um she said that that day was the worst day of her medical career and she took two weeks off after Uh yeah i can imagine it's you know yeah they're human as well and they do these jobs because they love they love babies and they love birth and they love you know making people moms and dads and it's like you got I I know I said I said to Dylan the other day like I have I have some reservations around what could have been picked up sooner for us and Dylan's like I'm glad it Mm -hmm. didn't you know we went in there with so much joy and he doesn't have trauma from the birth because he didn't he didn't know to listen out for a cry he didn't know that Millie should have opened her eyes he didn't he didn't know and so and he just like not that he thought her being taken up to Niku was normal but he just he really really didn't know anything was wrong at that point there's a gift in that I know and there was a real beautiful innocence in all of and because he just kept rubbing my head she's here look at her hair like you know he was just loving every second <laughs> and That's I'm so screaming is, I know yeah. I'm, like, I'm still breathing is she alive and he's like she's okay you know and she wasn't but it, it, yeah. it is beautiful and and but I said to him yesterday I said you are the only person in that room that doesn't have trauma I mm. said like we had so many midwives and doctors and pediatricians and people were called in from other rooms. Like it was awful. And so much so that many of them attended Millie's funeral and, you know, they don't attend funerals, you know, because Mm -hmm. this is a big hospital and sadly it's not uncommon, but I guess just the way it happened and the trauma of it and the circumstances, I don't know. It's just, but yeah. my midwife called the other week and she said, Rochelle, I've never attended a funeral for a baby ever. Like, but I just yeah. had to come to Millie's. And I just said to him, I said, it was just so traumatic for everyone involved that had we have known prior, like if we knew something was wrong in utero, it wouldn't have been that way. Like it's the outcome wouldn't have changed. Millie was never going to be okay. She was always going to have this disease and be super sick. But I just, the trauma of that birth was just, something that will never leave me nor that medical team I'm sure Mm -hmm. 
Oh, so God. yeah, like I'm sitting here saying I can't even imagine <sighs> not a planned cesarean, and I'm sitting there saying I can't even imagine like being in a position where I can't do anything, and you were, you were mm. in that position, wide awake wide awake just numb from here down and I was laying there open and I was watching them like I had my head turned to the side and I was watching them work on Millie like on the recess table and like and Dylan patting my head saying everything's okay and I was like literally yelling out is she breathing and like they found like she she was breathing and she had a heartbeat and I was like you know celebrating I was so excited I was like that's all that matters right now you know like Mm -hmm because I didn't think anything could be wrong if they had a heartbeat and she was breathing like, okay, great. Like, and, but I could see, I could see the back of the pediatrician and I could see the nurses all looking up at him and looking down at her. Like I could just see on their faces that like something was wrong. Like they Mm -hmm. looked so worried. They looked, and I think now like that's probably why they were so attached to Millie because they didn't know what was wrong, but they knew something was wrong. And because she was just floppy and oh, it was just, but yeah, I was laying there numb. And then I was just vomiting. I was so sick. I was like shaking and vomiting and just, and then they came over and they said, um, we're going to take Millie up to Niku. We're going to take your baby and, we're, and your husband's going to come with us. And I was like, yeah, great. So, you know, cause that was my one birth preference. Like no matter where the baby goes, Dylan goes too. And I had said that to him, yeah. no matter what, you just never leave that baby's side. And so he went and yeah, I was just so traumatized. Like I was just vomiting and, and shaking, like conv- like couldn't stop shaking. It was just, yeah. <sighs> but I, like I have said to them, like for my next birth, like I want to be knocked out. I can't, but they said like, you know, in your instance, you don't get to have that time straight away and then you have these blank periods and then you've got to piece together the pieces. So there's no, there's no better or worse scenario in this. There's no right or wrong way, you know, like, yes, I have the Mm -hmm. trauma of being awake, but you have these blank patches of what on earth happened. I was asleep. Like you just lost these hours of life essentially, you know? And so (sighs) there's, we just all have our, own fucking trauma in our own ways right yeah like there is no better and there is no worse and just like I have that blank patch of time Mm -hmm. you know where I had to learn what the story was later and um waking up from that and Sean being there and him just looking at me Nora wasn't there we didn't know she was Nora yet. Mm-hmm. He just shook his head. Oh. You know, like he couldn't, he couldn't say anything. And because when you got put to sleep, you were just getting wheeled in for surgery. You knew that something was wrong, but like, you just think you're going to wake up and she's going to be there. Like She had no heartbeat. And because we didn't know how long she was had been gone for, I still had hope. Of course, of course. And I went, I yeah, I went out with that, holding on to that bit of hope. <sighs> yeah, I'm a very medically minded person. Uh, mm-hmm. Long before I ended up a house painter, I thought that I was going to med school. Well. So I had I had studied and. You know, I know more or less the odds for these things and, mm-hmm. you know, what it, what it can look like if someone's not had a heartbeat or, or been receiving oxygen for some time. And I just was like, please, God, like, let her, mm. let her be okay. And like, whatever mm-hmm. it is and whatever it ends up being, like, we'll deal with it. Mm-hmm. you know we'll figure out how to handle it and just like <sighs> never in my wildest dreams were we not going home with her and I mean it's a small <laughs> hospital we don't have a NICU yeah um but I was a very low 
incredibly low risk. Mm-hmm. 27. Liter- literally you know, up until... pregnancy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, absolutely no inkling of, of any sort of trouble. There were no signs for this, and I think that's <sighs> part of what is so, like, uniquely fucked up about it. Mm-hmm. Um... Sorry, I'm swearing. I'm like, I swear. You can say this. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I just, you know, like in the, in the days and months since Nora's birth, I've done so much research around she was technically a stillbirth. Mm-hmm. Um, this does, this does happen. It is often when it's um you know a stillbirth that incurs in labor um (sighs) it's due to a cord accident or you know a knot cord compression Mm -hmm. they're not being enough vessels all along and it just turns out that when they need that extra burst of oxygen and energy they can't get it fuck um Placental abruption is like a big one when it happens in labor. We had no signs of any of that. There are no signs whatsoever that she was in distress. And I remember when, before we were able to see Nora, I remember Dr. Rennie coming when I was still in recovery and Sean was with me and she, you know, let me know everything that Sean couldn't say at that, at that point and that she had never regained a heartbeat. And she looked at me and she's just like, I'm so sorry. Like this just sometimes happens. And she's like, we, we don't know. We don't know why this happened, but she's like looking at everything. They sent away my placenta to pathology, but having had a cesarean they were able to like really get in there and take a look at everything and she said there were no signs that she was in distress nothing is wrong with your placenta it was perfect and it's like you know and she's just like this this happens and we don't know why there's no fucking reason there's no reason and she's just like this isn't she's like I just want you to know that this isn't like a case for a coroner you know Mm. she's like this just has happened to you guys so they um, didn't they didn't suggest an autopsy they they (sighs) did um you know we were absolutely warranted one if we chose to get one yeah and that was just like god you there are so many decisions that you're anticipating that you're going to have to make as a mother as a new parent and that is not one yep in no in no way do you ever think you're gonna have to make that decision in your child's life let alone on the day that you're supposed to meet them Uh uh-huh um We, yeah, so we, we were offered one and, you know, Sean and I just looked at each other and I was just like, I remember thinking, she's just so small. Mm -hmm. (laughs) She has seven pounds on the dot. So she wasn't a little girl by any means and, um, but she was so small and like, I was like, she just, you know, we, we got to see her and her little body was so perfect. (laughs) She was so, she was so perfect. And, um, I just, I couldn't (sighs) emotionally, I just couldn't handle the thought of somebody rummaging through her little body looking for answers and I know absolutely that it would have been done respectfully Uh uh-huh I have no doubt that she would have been treated with utmost respect but I just couldn't 
that was not something that either of us felt was was necessary at the time and I think I remember mentioning to you that I look back now and just in light of all the test results we got back being negative Mm -hmm. everything from pathology came back perfect um it very likely would have been inconclusive Mm -hmm. and that and that was my feeling and I just didn't want her to have to go through that unnecessarily but you know I have had some moments of regret just thinking like there could because we didn't have that there's no Mm -hmm. we don't know yeah like she could yeah. have had some freak heart defect that was never picked up. She, you know, she could have had a clot or a stroke or like yeah. any other number of cardiac events. Um, she could have had a clotting disorder that went undetected. And we and we don't get to know those things because we decided not to have an autopsy. Um, but that was that was what we felt and you know we stand by that and just having also been given that sentiment from my OB just saying like this isn't Mm -hmm. you know we have no suspicions as to there's something that needs to be looked into further it's just one of those things that happens um we yeah we didn't have one and I mean that would have come also from the pediatrician that would have you you had a pediatrician working on her straight after the delivery is that who would have been like a child like it's they're actually would, like a children's doctor yeah in in our in our practice like the physicians who deliver babies they're GPS mm-hmm. they have obstetrical training and they're trained yeah. in like maternal um, fetal health. Okay. Okay. They were the ones that would have been working on her. Yeah. Um, and I we mean, actually I don't think... have a pediatrician in town, which is okay. insane. There are so many kids here. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. But I mean, that doctor would have had enough, I would assume, mm-hmm. enough knowledge and experience working on her to know that you know had she have had a stroke or had she have had something else they may have noticed that with all of the things they were doing whilst trying to revive her so yeah you know I know that when Millie came out I asked my OB at what point did you know something was wrong and I thought it was because she was floppy and he said it was actually the shape of her head I was like Uh. whoa you know so they you know, do these whilst they might not experience that particular thing. You know, your your OB of eighteen years had never experienced that, mm-hmm. but she'd experienced enough healthy babies to know yeah. the difference. And so, yeah, we didn't choose to have an autopsy either. We, I stupidly asked the question, "Is that invasive?" And she was like, "Uh, yes." You know, and so I was like, like the most, yeah, the most invasive. Everything. Yeah, and I was like, yeah. oh, no. I said, oh, no, thanks. You know, like we had answers. Millie had fought for seven days on earth to get us the answers that we needed. She had literally almost every part of her body break down to give them mm-hmm. every answer. But yeah. so we didn't need that. But I really didn't want that vision either. You know, that wasn't an option for us. And like you said, in your heart, you felt like it would have come back inconclusive anyway. And mm-hmm. It was the right and decision it, for you guys. Yeah. Yeah. I was going to add just like, I've done so much research since I was born. And first of all, um, you know, I feel like you don't know the statistics for miscarriage until it's happened to you or until you're mm-hmm. in that kind of early pregnancy bubble and you realize um, what all of your greatest fears can can be. Mm-hmm. Um, but I had never heard, it's one in 160 pregnancies in North America. I think the stat is very similar for Australia as well. Far out. Wow. And... Um, it's less than 1%, but that is a staggering number. Yeah. That's a staggering number. And um, 
you know, of those, it's less than 30%, I believe, um, occur during labor. So not uncommon, but not terribly common either. And um, of those, like 50%, they have no, they have absolutely no reason as to why it happens. I just and, don't and understand. And that's like regardless of autopsy or not. It just blows my mind. Like how can we live, be living in this day and age? You we know, have nuclear when, medicine. Right? And we like don't know why babies die in utero. blows my mind. Mm-hmm. I was chatting to a midwife friend the other day who said, you know, the rate of SIDS is decreasing. You know, we're learning so much about SIDS because I had so much fear around that. I had done all my yes. research based oh, around God, of safe sleeping, safe sleep Australia, this, don't do that, blah, blah, blah. Like I yeah. was prepared. I was like scared but prepared. I was not prepared for something to happen immediately after her birth or during birth. Like I was not prepared for that. No, and you, and I think a big reason as to why that is is because so many families live through that in silence. Uh huh. You know, it's like unless you're very close to someone, you might you might never have known With... that they were going to have other children. Mm. You know, mm -hmm. I there have been people that have come forward since we had Nora and said, you know, like, oh, our first two, we lost in similar circumstances or, you know, second, second trimester loss. And we were just like, we had no clue. Mm -mm. We had no clue. I, yeah, I, I have a family friend whose mom reached out to me and she kind of adopted me when I was a teenager and she said, you know, mm -hmm. and I still remember growing up knowing my friend had an older brother who had died of SIDS and she flew up here to a different state for Millie's funeral and she just said to me, I'm with you. Like she said, I still go over the death of Kurt often and he was oh. he's 37 years lost, you know, 37 years ago. She said it never leaves you, that you know, like – yeah, it's like, which part of me loves because I'm like, I never want Millie to leave my heart, you know, no, and she won't. No, and you know, we, and we just, I don't, I just, for me, I was like, for, you know, and she said 37 years ago, people didn't talk about it. You know, it was shamed to talk about it. And she said, mm -hmm. I love what you're doing. She said, I wish this was, you know, a podcast and people talking so openly was around 37 years ago because I would have felt so less alone. Mm -hmm. But I just, I'm in shock at how many of us are going through this. Like your little Nora passed away four days after Millie. It's just like how, how. That statistic that I cited you one in 160 mm -hmm. that is i think 25 babies in the u.s every day mm. and in canada it's nine so the day in australia we... it's six in australia yeah. it's six so the day, the day that you the, birthed nora the day we birthed nora statistically eight other women became me oh and i just can't like never heard of it before and like stillbirth claims more children's lives than SIDS, than guns, than car accidents, wow. common cold and flu, mm -hmm. childhood cancer combined every year. And yet we what? don't talk about it at all. Yeah. And yet we're so fearful of all those other things. Yeah. Like, you know, Dylan, we're traveling to the US next week and Dylan's mom's like, I'm so scared of the guns. I'm like, dude, we'll be fine. <laughs> oh my God. Like, that's, that's funny that you say that because we took a trip to Montana, um, which is like just across the border for us. Mm -hmm. I had never been and it's quite yeehaw down there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. And we were just like, I was like, 
you know, like we're going to be camping out. And I was like, we might stop and like camp in a Walmart parking lot here and there as we're like passing through. And I was just like, uh-huh. people could shoot us. <laughs> and, you know, very fortunately, Sean and I traveling down there, you know, we're not scruffy looking or anything. We're not doing the sketchy shit. And mm-hmm. we're the right color that people will mm-hmm. leave us alone. And I, which mm-hmm. is just like so messed up but Mm -hmm. yeah no it's real and I hate that you guys have to think of that over there like it's it's so different in the U.S. than it is here like so different like we blows my mind it's Mm -hmm. but I guess for me I was like when I went to the U.S. for the first time in 2013 now I probably was a bit cautious of that or scared of that and now since Millie like I said to Dylan's mum like oh we can't control fucking anything anymore yeah. and so like, what's our the point of the worst thing that can happen yeah like I the just... worst has already <sighs> happened mm-hmm. yeah literally mm-hmm. and like you said more kids die of stillbirth per day or per whatever than from guns from accidents from cancer like mm-hmm. and yet no one's talking about it and what lobbying and what research is being done <sighs> to reduce it yeah yeah, I mean, there is a really amazing group of women in the States. Um, they call themselves Push for Pregnancy. Mm-hmm. They were just on the steps of U.S. Congress, and, like, a bunch of them had met with Congress to pass protocol um, for stillbirth wow. and, like, better support for mothers and uh, their lobbying for... Um, like additional universal monitoring and things because in the States you get the care that you can buy. Right. Um, In Canada, we're very fortunate in the majority of Canada. I will say there are lots of remote centers where people don't get seen nearly as much as they should through their pregnancies because of resources. Um, Yeah. But largely in Canada, we, we do have access to the care that we need. Mm. Um, and it and it's still like the same statistic. So Yeah. Yeah. And then there's so many people who are scared of monitoring, like, you know, I don't want to be on monitors or I don't want to have these scans or I don't wanna and so it's like there's oh all this God, I, know. I guess miseducation or I don't I don't I don't know. I don't know. I just maybe it's just lack of conversations. Yeah. And I don't want to you know, I don't question anyone's decisions as a parent or as a mother because like you have absolutely like your right to whatever you feel comfortable with but um yeah it does feel like as soon as you get into like the pregnancy and birth world there's definitely two camps you've got (laughs) like your um heavily medicalized folks and then you've got i call them the granola moms (laughs) The, the, the granola the moms. granola moms <laughs> um and like I was leaning that way and I you know we chose a hospital birth because they we don't have the resources here to support home birth um, yeah I feel more comfortable in a hospital so you yeah. know that decision kind of being made for me was totally fine but yeah um yeah I don't know I feel like it shouldn't it shouldn't be such a mystery Mm, (laughs) any part of mm. it yeah I mean I I've put a disclaimer on the end of all my podcasts just saying you know the opinions of the people that I'm interviewing are different you know don't necessarily match mine but Mm. it's not it's it's I said to this girl that I interviewed you know, two episodes ago, she was opting for a home birth. She'd had five vaginal births. She'd had five babies and nothing had ever gone wrong. So her sixth baby, yeah. she's like, I'm doing it at home. I've got a midwife. I'm good. Of what, course. what was to think that anything would be any different? And and then she went in for an anatomy scan and it came out that her baby was not okay. And her the mm-hmm. rest of her pregnancy and birth ended up extremely, you know, m- medical. But 
I was always like, oh my gosh, I would only ever be in a hospital. Like when you said you went into mm-hmm. labor and they're going to send you home, I was like, oh, I would just want to be in the care, you know, but that's just me. Like, it's like, yeah. there's no, I don't, there's, everyone has their own, there's a lot of people who have been burnt by the hospital. So they want to be in home because they're scared. You know, it's like, yeah, I just, people have had traumatic hospital births and they're like, that is the last place that I want to go. Of course. You know, and it, so, and I don't think... I mean, all of this has just, like you said, taught me that you don't have the control that you think you do, that you would like to, Mm-mm. Um, Mm-mm. regardless of your choices for, for you and your child. Yeah. You just don't get to call it. Mm-mm. Um, oh, yeah. I said to my OB the other day, I said, I'm, you know, considering surrogacy because when they cut me in the cesarean, they cut my T incision, my uterus is, mm. I can now never go into a natural labor because I would have uterine rupture and me and my baby would die. Yeah. So I have to only have cesareans, which I'm fine with. But I said to her, maybe I just go surrogacy. And she said, Rochelle, just because you have a surrogate doesn't guarantee you a baby. And I thought, fuck you're right like you know like the same odds as us yeah like and I was like okay yeah it's just it's fucked like it's like it's so true though like I I just need but but it it, at first I whilst I thought that well that's pretty intense but I was like just I just got to go day by day and I've always said to myself when I was pregnant with Millie I trust my body and I trust my baby and Mm -hmm. you know she showed me that I can have a 39 week pregnancy and I and I grew her and she was here and she was perfect and beautiful and she just wasn't able to stay here but you know um you did it though you brought her all the way yeah and so I know that you know I can do it again and surrogate or not whatever journey we go on it's like whether if we're meant to have earthside babies we will and we can't control it whether we carry it whether someone else carries it whether I, it's like mm-hmm. so so out of our control and I'm so sorry you experienced that I can't even like it, it, the the trauma of you know just you went in for her birthday and it just all went downhill like this and then you were asleep and then you missed parts and then your partner had to experience that and then it's just fucked it's just like there's not any silver lining in any of it like not a single fucking second of silver lining no no and I mean we I do think that we've managed to like pull a lot of beauty out of this and I think that Nora has taught us to pull a lot of beauty out of this Mm. no silver linings um Mm -hmm. absolutely not but I am really grateful for I think childbirth regardless of outcomes um but particularly in instances where it's complicated and Mm -hmm. It doesn't go the way that you're expecting it to go, Mm -hmm. which maybe is all birth. I don't know. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Um, It's like, tell me someone who got exactly the birth story that they wanted. Mm. Um, I just think that people that go through that together, I know this to be true for Sean and I, like we transcended into like another level of Mm. love. Mm. Like you think that you're a team before, yeah um and like absolutely we are now and I know that that was going to be the case whether or not you know we had a living child but that gives me goosebumps yeah to to be in the the space that we're in and to have gone what we've gone through and now learning to co-parent a child that isn't here and trying to figure out what that looks like for us is like He's so strong. Mm. And um, Mm. we are, we collectively are so strong. It's so nice. Yeah. And that would, and that's not the case for everyone. I, I, I I wouldn't believe, you know, like there's a lot Mm. of people that wouldn't be able to pull through together, you know, there's a true. 
I, I do feel like, you know, Dylan and I are blessed to have, but last week I was not a good person to be around and, you know, we were fighting and I was like, whoa, like we need to pull this together or it's going to pull apart, you know, and mm. it takes and work. this could but... break you. Mm, absolutely. This, if anything could, it could break you, right? Yeah, I, I can see that. So it takes, you know, two really strong people to continue to love and respect each other in what is the worst possible story of your life, the worst possible chapter ever to happen. Mm -hmm. It takes two really loving and respectful people to keep it together. You ever just have people tell you like, oh, you guys are so strong and you're like, I wish we could just be weak and still have our baby. Uh huh. <laughs> you know, like, I yeah. wish I could kind of be like really flimsy in character, but still have my child. Like, I wish I didn't yeah. have to be strong. I know. Actually. It's like, why, why, why was I chosen as this person? It's not, mm. I, I don't want it to be my story. No, I know. Um, what I will say is that we had a gorgeous daughter. Mm. and she was perfect in every single way and I am so grateful that she chose us to be her parents mm. yeah um and just those you know we only got to spend a few hours with her um when I was in recovery like I was still just like in the recovery bed outside of surgery, like curtains for walls. Mm. And they brought Nora to us and mm. she just looks so much like both of us. It's wild. Yeah. It's so wild. I love that. And I just like, you know, they're like, you have a little girl and... Ugh. It's like I knew, I felt like I knew who she was the whole time. It was like, mm. I'm looking at her, I have her photo right here. <laughs> She's mm. with me. Um, mm. I just looked at her and I was like, of course it was you. It was always you. Yeah. That, mm. was, that was in there and kicking me and mm -hmm. being my sidekick at like all those insane weeks of work yeah that we went through together and just everything yeah um so we got to spend a few hours there while my c-section drugs wore off mm -hmm. which is like that's such a crazy state to try and do anything in i'm sure mm -hmm. as you'll mm -hmm. <laughs> agree to knocked out fully yeah. or not yeah um and just like yeah in so much shock but also like this really beautiful bubble of love mm. and um we just you know we just got to hold her and stare at her mm -hmm. <laughs> just try and like memorize Take in. Mm. every single thing about her because we didn't know <sighs> you know they told us that the funeral home was going to come for her that afternoon because they don't like our hospital is so small we don't have um i didn't even know what cold cots were mm -hmm. before this no and um since this happened i'm really wanting to fundraise to get one for oh the hospital. yay like i know Please. it doesn't happen often it's such mm -hmm. a small place but i know of people that this has happened to here and i just think if I can buy one family more time. Because, mm -hmm. mm. yeah, oh, to, to just learn later that we could have had her with us for, like, mm -hmm. days if we had wanted. Oh. Um, but we, yeah, we had to fit hello and goodbye into that whole early afternoon and... Please, if you <sighs> create a link... Uh, create a 100% cr create a link of some sort to raise funds for that and we can put it in the show notes and we can share it and because oh. that's you know like so Thanks. special to have you know a Nora cot a Nora cold cot in your hospital you know imagine Thank that you. Yeah. yeah it's just do they have um 
like here we have a thing, I think it's just actually Brisbane, Queensland, I'm not sure if it's Australia wide, but they had something called Hummingbird House, which is a house where not just babies but kids can go to and the families to spend time with them, whether they're either really unwell or have passed. Is that not an option in your town? Is there anything like that in Canada? No, I'm sure in larger centres that there is, and I know... Um, you know, in a similar vein, but not quite like, you know, we've got like Ronald McDonald house and all those things Mm -hmm. that support families. Um, but we don't have like dedicated, at least around us, we don't have any dedicated, um, facilities where you can go accompanying your child. Um, yeah. Yeah. Hmm. So we just, we kind of had to do it all there. Um, Yeah. And we just, you know, took turns holding her and Sean got up in bed with me and Mm -hmm. we just, I mean, oh my God, the photos that we took are so bad. (laughs) Like, (laughs) (laughs) just like, I mean, it's like horrible fluorescent lighting and everything. There's like meal trays in the background and uh-huh uh-huh I look back now and I'm like oh my god you know Sean and I are both photographers Sean in a semi-professional no way. um you know capacity and like we took terrible photos thank god the nurses I mean we're just like crying and uh-huh we're like shaking tried to hold the camera and I just <clears throat> yeah um, but the nurses took some really beautiful photos of us for her. That's just so like nice. just like every angle that mm. they could think of and like wrapped up and they had um they had diapered her for us and mm. like wrapped her in this little receiving blanket <sighs> that was knit by one of the nurses' moms. Um oh. Yeah, and we got to, she makes them for the babies, and they have little matching hats. And um, Nora's was, like, this mix of, like, purples and lilac colors. And, I mean, like, by the time I got to see her, she was, like, a very similar color to her blanket, (laughs) which I wasn't expecting. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, when they asked if... I wanted to see her. I was really afraid of what she would look like because there's no, I've heard so many, you know, moms of of stillborn babies say this. They just like have no idea. (sighs) Nothing Mm -hmm. prepares you for that. No. Um, But she just looked like a baby. Mm. She looked like our baby and she was just, yeah. A little bit purplish. Mm, yeah. Um, and like she would, you know, be holding her and her like head would like tip to one mm. side and blood would run out of her nose. Oh, fuck. And her mm-hmm. mouth and like, you know, we would just, no problem. Just, you know, like, Why put oh, all? Darling, you know, mm, you're leaking. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Why is I had somebody said that the other day and I was like, why does that happen? Like, is it just that? that, I'm sure you've researched it. (laughs) I have have because I wanted to know if it was something that happened, um, you know, prior to her passing Mm. or if it was part of all of that. And, um, you know, it was, they said she had a lot of blood in her airway and it kind of, Nobody really told me why, but it is something that um, naturally happens, especially in babies and children. Their bodies are so small Mm. um, that they deteriorate quite quickly, which is why those cold cots are so amazing because they Mm. put that process on hold. Um, Mm. Your baby keeps looking like your baby for a lot longer. Um, what happens is they get like blood pooling mm. and um yeah especially just like in their lungs and around their hearts and mm. um we were we were lucky i'm like we 
we're not mm. very lucky really overall mm. but um we were lucky that she um you know hadn't really there can be like a lot of like swelling and things that can happen mm -hmm. depending on when your child passed their skin becomes quite fragile and just like all these awful mm -hmm. awful mm -hmm. things um and I just yeah like I didn't know all of that in such detail, but I was just like, oh my God, like, what is she gonna, what is she gonna look like? And she just was perfect. Mm. She was just perfect. And she yeah. has Sean's nose and this little, mm. like, furrow in her brow that I had when I was a baby, like, just a little concerned looking lady, you know? Uh -huh. And, um, I had like I have huge hands. <laughs> uh huh. She and I grew into them, but she um she had big hands and big feet and just mm. like, you know, I've got really there's a huge gap between my big toes and she had the same thing. And my mom, <laughs> I remember sending photos of her to my mom and she was like, Oh, she's not a sandal girl. <laughs> 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 you're like i know that feeling it was like so true so true uh -huh. um and sean's got like for whatever reason his <clears throat> pardon me his pinky fingers like crook inward my hands with sean's crooked pinkies which was just you're like kidding. so crazy yeah mm -hmm. i didn't realize like i i had looked at them then when we had her with us and I was like, oh, I think they're straight, but then I got her handprints back later, and like they're like curled in, like this. You're kidding? Yeah, she's um, just like this perfect mix of both of you. Yeah, it's it's so crazy. Uh huh. Um. So we had her with us for a few hours, and um, you know, we named her and. They took all her measurements and everything, and put that on a card for us to to have so that we would have all her birth stats and um uh, the funeral home here is you know really beautiful it's run by a local couple and they um in instances of you know children and babies and things like what happened to us they take care of everything Mm. Um, so Gary, our, our funeral director and one of the owners, um, he came to get her and he was just like, so he's such a beautiful man. Like he was so kind. I just remember thinking like, you are in the right job mm. as such a, you know, I looked at him, <laughs> yeah. I looked at him when he came and introduced himself and you know, he was like, I just want you guys to know, like, I'm here. You have all the time that you need to, like, say goodbye. And he brought a blanket that his wife had crocheted oh. for her. And um, I just remember looking at him and saying, like, you have a hard job. Yeah. And all the nurses were standing in behind. They're all crying. Yeah. Um, and I'm looking at all of them like, you have such a hard job. And he goes, yeah, some days. <laughs> you know? <laughs> some days it's hard. And, um, you know, we, we said our goodbyes to her. And, um... Just thank her for for choosing us and for giving us such a beautiful experience through her pregnancy and yeah that she would always be with us and God I don't know so many other things that she's beautiful and we were proud of her. Mm -hmm. Um. And, um, you know, we, we traded him blankets, so we have the one that she was in in the hospital. 
I love that. It's got like her blood on it and I Mm. like can't bring myself to wash it, which is like maybe so gross, but Mm -mm. I feel like mums will just get it. Yeah, I would not be washing that. (laughs) I can't. And it's like, it's so crazy because I still like, I'll still sit there and smell it. And I'm like, she's Mm -hmm. only in it for like a few hours. Like there's no way that it smells like her at all, but Mm -mm. Um, we got to keep that with us, which was really nice. We kept it in my hospital bed for the rest of my time there. Um, Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, Gary came and he took her away and he gave us his card and just, you know, told us to call him when we were ready. And, um... Then they brought me upstairs and we were just like, oh, just like instantly missing her. And I mean, I think so many women going through your pregnancy, you've had your baby inside of you for however long they were and you've gotten used to that feeling and especially like you know she was full term Mm -hmm. you instantly regardless of whether your child is with you or not your body is just like where are they Mm -hmm. you know where are they empty like all of a sudden your body feels empty empty. yeah Mm -hmm. and your stomach is like mine was so deflated and just like weird and squidgy like right away and I was pregnant anymore I looked like I just had a big lunch um Mm -hmm. which was weird yeah and um you still bleed after a cesarean no one told me that Mm -hmm. like vaginally which is Mm -hmm. wild and I mean even you know having had a c-section they scrape you out pretty good but it was still like weeks like everybody else yes i spotted for about six weeks i think yeah I, at six weeks i thought my period was coming back but then when i messaged my ob he said oh it's just your postpartum still i was like oh Wild. okay yeah because that's like between six and eight weeks they say like if you are going to get a cycle back soonish mm-hmm. that's like when it starts to happen yeah but i still bled for a few weeks um our nurses were so great they like they brought an extra hospital bed up and pushed them together oh, so that Sean so could stay with me um and you're supposed to stay in for like I think three days is protocol when you've had a c-section at our yeah. hospital but they got me out the next day she was born on Monday and we went home Tuesday afternoon. Oh, wow. Yeah. Ours um, is five nights for a season. Yeah. I, I mean, I got home and we just, we wanted so badly to be home, but uh huh. I got home and I was just like, I don't know if I should be here mm. <laughs> yet, mm. but like the hospital just felt not an okay place to be. Of course. Um, and they completely understood that. And, you know, I walked out of there like I was mm, yeah. moving. Yeah, don't need a wheelchair. I'm out. Yeah. No, they got me one and cleaned it. And I just, like, walked past it to the elevator. And I was just like, we are, I'm upright and we're going now. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, but they were so beautiful. And, like, all of the nurses that had been there with us on Monday came back through in rotation. And even if they weren't working, just mm. sat with us for a while. And... Mm would cry with us and try and bring us you know like this one nurse was just so funny she's like do you have any wishes like what is she's like I can grant Mm. wishes I'm not only a nurse I'm a genie like what can I bring Uh, uh. (laughs) she tracked down a a coke for Sean which was just (laughs) so cute she's like we don't have those in the hospital she's like I will find you one uh-huh. I'm so sure that she stole it out of like a staff fridge or something. Um, it was maybe someone's lunch. It was lunch, somebody's lunch know. break. <laughs> it didn't matter. Um, but that, yeah, that was just, they were so great and we just, we felt so held. Um, 
that whole time. Like they really did as much as they could soften the blow. They, they really mm-hmm. did. And I'm so grateful to have had all of those people with us. Um, and we had friends send food up to the hospital because, you know, hospital food is, mm-hmm. it is what it is. Mm-hmm. Worldwide, um, it's terrible. <laughs> yeah. And like, <laughs> why is that? It's like you're healing that you yeah. get. Like, a roast beef sandwich (laughs) gross bread and processed cheese and like all these awful super sugary applesauce like yeah Uh um and sean is celiac and allergic to like a few other things in conjunction with that so he couldn't eat like anything so we had friends send us up like a big bag of like fresh produce and um all this goodness and then my um my friend Nat who is also my boss I you know Sean had phoned people it's we're a funny little work family so I work with Nat in her company Mm -hmm. and my partner Sean works with her husband Don they work for the same company no way (laughs) yes (laughs) that's the the kind of town we live in Uh um and I guess you know, Sean obviously had had to phone in to one of his bosses and just say, look, this is, you know, because it was Fuck. before her due date, he's like, Caitlin went into labor. This is what has happened and I'm not going to be in And because, I mean, thing. he was still working and you he didn't was. tell him till like 5 a.m. And I'm assuming he was meant to go to work that day. Yeah, like he, I, I do think he got in touch with people that day. And I mean, people would have just assumed at that point like I was so far she's in late it was any day now yeah yeah they were actually like betting on when we were gonna have our baby Mm -hmm. um in his office but he had um he had let them know and I guess word kind of trickled down enough that (sighs) Nat's partner Don had heard and they just were there like Mm -hmm. a Tuesday morning and um you know, the nurse came and she's like, there's like, there's a woman here to see you. She's like, I don't know. And I just knew it was Nat. Mm. <laughs> she didn't even say like what her name was or anything. And she's like, do you want, you know, do you want to see her? And I was just like, yes. And mm. she and Don just came in and held us and, you know, she was it was like she was their baby too they were so excited to be her aunt and uncle and um they've got two little kids as well and it was just like you know they were so excited for us to to enter that chapter of our lives alongside them and it just meant the world that they were there especially because you know my family was still in Ontario and Sean's folks live a few hours away so you know that was we had family I feel like I mean one you just need people like that you need people to just turn up and be there and just love Mm -hmm. on you and you know there's not really anything they can say or whatever but just to be there but people who have kids they will say you know, I can't imagine the pain, but if they they've can. got kids, I know they can. Yeah. I yeah. just feel like our friends that have kids have just felt this more than anything because they just imagine if they lost their own child and it's just this unbearable pain. And I know a lot of our friends that the husbands, like the dads are just like, they just break in another way like it's just like bro like I can't even imagine you know they had they can imagine though and I think that's where that pain and like I felt like all of my friends felt my pain before I even did like everyone was just heartbroken and I was like just in a fucking blur I don't know I didn't even feel real you're in shock yeah and I just you don't know which way is up Mm -mm. but I'm so glad you had those friends there for you that you know, we're able to just hold space for you and mm-hmm. 
were you guys able to have like time off work what did what did postpartum look like for you and you know the time that followed yeah we um so Sean was meant to get a month off with me um from work paid and he did amazing did get that yeah his company is it's phenomenal um, they took really good care of him through this Mm -hmm. um those early days and I still got, um, if you're working full time for an incorporated business in Canada, um, and you've been working enough hours prior to, uh, you know, delivery, we do have a maternity benefit here. That is, it's 15 weeks of maternity benefit. Amazing. It's for mothers. So that's Mm -hmm. paid. It's like 55% of your wage. Mm -hmm. Um, and then there's another 35 weeks of what's called parental benefit, like Mm -hmm. parental leave from work, um, that you can kind of like split up between, you know, if mom needs to go back, dad can be off for a bit. That's so good. Yeah. Yeah. So obviously we didn't qualify for, um, the parental side Are you kidding I did get the 15 weeks though, and I'm still, okay. I'm still off okay. in that. So, okay. um, yeah, but had, had Sean's company not provided him the leave that he had, he would have mm. had to take that time off mm. um, or, or, or not been yeah. able to, yeah. or not been allowed to. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, so to have him off with me for a month was amazing. I think it actually ended up being like five almost six weeks total that's amazing um and you know we just we got home from the hospital on that Tuesday afternoon and um there was a baby robin sitting on our porch just like in the sun mm. just waiting in our doorway and it was like oh. hey Nora you know oh just letting us know she was around and Mm -hmm. we just um we have this great porch on the back of our house and we spent a lot of time on that porch just Mm -hmm. you can see like a traffic circle from our house and we would just watch the traffic and you know like right away getting home we were just like we want to do this with people around like we're gonna have if people want to come by they can come by and we'll just make sure that we're eating and Mm -hmm. we didn't want a quiet house yeah we were the same no baby Mm -hmm. noises we were just like Mm -hmm. we gotta have music playing in the house and yeah at all times so i really think you know there's no right way to do any of this but I really think we did a good job of getting through that first couple of weeks and then it doesn't even set in that it's real like you Mm -mm. keep it's irrational but you're like you're hoping that somehow it's wrong you're gonna get a call and they're like come get your baby I know I know imagine right um but it yeah, it started to feel like it was setting in a little bit around that that two week mark, and um, my family came from Ontario. They had planned to be out here with us for mm. a little under two weeks after Nora's birth, anyway. And so, mm-hmm. you know, they were like, "Do you still want us to? Do you still want us to come?" And we were just like, "Absolutely." And mm. um, it had been a year since I had seen them because I don't get home often enough. Um, mm. Canada's a really big country. It's pretty expensive to fly across it. Mm-hmm. And there's always an excuse not to. And it just ended up being a while that I hadn't seen them. And just when we were feeling like we didn't know how we were going to do it, they were here and mm. just got to spend lots of time with them and you know we were we were like hiking and stuff and there were a couple days like I was only three weeks postpartum Mm -hmm. with a c-section and I was just like what am I doing like 
yeah things that had seemed like you know shorter easy hikes before like even pregnant with Nora were just like <laughs> I would get back to the car and be like that was probably that Stupid. now feels like it was too much. yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. um but I just was like I wanted for them so badly to know you know they hadn't really been out west to see where Sean and I live and it was meant to be a little bit of that too just showing them around and Mm. you know kind of introducing them to what our life looks like out here and so we still got to do some of that and um my parents brought their camper and I just you know we would go and sit around the fire with them at night and talk and my brother and my sister came out as well and they were here with us for a little bit of that and and just every night without fail my mom and I would end up you know going into the camper to make tea or something we would just end up like having a good cry in bed yeah <laughs> so we really yeah. like we were home yeah it was it meant so much for them to be here and I don't think you know they were that two weeks of them being here was like a lifeline when we didn't really yeah. know how to get through such um, a blessing yeah and they left so it was a little bit just a little bit before I was a full month postpartum and Sean and I you know my parents were leaving and we were just like we've got a little like slide in truck bed camper and we have wanted to take Nora camping um obviously not right away when she was like little little but it was something Mm. that we had really wanted to do with her and our valley is really small and it can feel you can feel a bit like claustrophobic and valley stuck at the best of times and then in the worst of times it just was like every time we went out it was more people that we knew or that had Mm. known me Mm -hmm. through my pregnancy and you know even like grocery store clerks and Mm -hmm. people at the bank and you know yeah the ladies and the chemist and yeah the pharmacy yeah yeah Mm -hmm. and you know just countless friends and we were trying to call people in the beginning I was calling like three people a day and then I was like whoa I have to stop Mm and to slow this down because there's only so many times you can handle like listening someone's heartbreak for you um so we just said you know we got to get out of here and the day that my parents headed back for home we threw all our stuff in the camper and went down to montana for 10 days Mm -hmm. um neither of us had been before and it was just really nice to get out and see some new sites and just, just get away with complete strangers who had no idea you know mm-hmm. and yeah it was I mean we just we brought Nora with us like we got her ashes back um, mm-hmm. we had been able to go and see her at the funeral home prior to her cremation which was you did yeah we did so yeah we were able to go and kind of have a little more time and not be so um it was really great to have that time not being so in shock and like Mm -hmm. me full of pain meds and you know we're just like okay like this is what's happening and it was really great to go and I mean it was like at the funeral home but they brought her to us and we just got to sit with her on our own for Mm. probably about an hour and she had um you know they keep them in cold storage there so she mm-hmm. started to defrost a little bit and then we were just mm. like, okay, it's, you know mm. it's time. um and then you have to walk away from them again hand them over again mm-hmm. <laughs> um but it that was really 
I'm really glad we got to see her again. It was just without a doubt, you know, when Gary called us and we were trying to figure out all the decisions that you have to make, you know, cremation or burial. And um, he's like, would you like to come and see her again? And we were just like, absolutely. Mm. Um, so we did get to see her and she was cremated and we went to go and get her ashes and they like gave her to us in a gift bag which is just like so fucked up mm. <laughs> that we're like we're leaving the funeral home we've like got this gift bag and we're just like okay Nora you know we're gonna put you in the car now fuck <laughs> it's like yeah. so so not how we imagined bringing our baby home mm. but... and um mm. Anyway, we brought her ashes with us to Montana, and, you know, we, um, ever since that night that we got home, we've been lighting a candle and just, you know, we say goodnight to her and we tell her about mm. our day and all the ways that she appeared for us that day, and we just say mm. thank you and, like, keep coming back to us. So beautiful. Um, yeah. And it's... I cherish that time that it's, you know, we think of her all day and we talk about her, but it's like that time is us all together as a family and just love that so much. It's so special. And, and sh like, I truly believe that they are with us all day. And I actually read something really beautiful the other day and it said, in the moments that I don't feel you with me, I know that you're, um, you're holding somebody else that needed you in that moment. Oh. And I was like, how nice is that? Yeah. Like if you, you know, if I go for coffee and I don't feel like she's with me, well, maybe she's with Dylan because he needed her in that moment or I just, yeah. Mm. I loved the rainbow that you sent me the other day. Yeah. On her, was that her second, her two-month birthday? Two birthday? birthday. Um, yeah, we were like, I mean... I'm um, I'm not a religious person. I would call myself spiritual for sure. Mm -hmm. I do feel really connected in that way. I'm also like a really scientific, rational person. So there's a <laughs> conflict there, uh -huh. and I, I just think mm -hmm. I'm like, yeah, you know, like it's September. It's like it's October now, and here that means that it's rainy season. So it's like, yes, it's raining all the time yes there are rainbows like that's you know but mm. that's how she's showing up for us right now and um it took me some time to speak about her birth um you know publicly we called we thought we called everyone that you know we would want it to hear from us firsthand and course you post something and then you realize like how many other people there are by degrees of separation you're just like oh, shit. Mm. um but since i you know made that little post just kind of letting people know why they hadn't seen our baby i mean we were so like private through sean and i are not really big social media people and um we were so private through my pregnancy i didn't even announce her like my pregnancy with her until I was 35 weeks. Right. And that was the last thing that was just sort of like hanging there in the void. And, you know, nobody, well, I say nobody asks. I did, I was getting a lot of messages being like, okay, hey, like it's been two months. Like, what's up mm -hmm. with your baby? Like, how's your baby mm -hmm. doing? And uh, people just assuming that we're just like taking this time for ourselves in your baby to let bubble. them know mm. yeah mm. you have to let them know that the worst has happened and mm -hmm. um since i put that there i've had so many beautiful photos you know sent to us of people catching rainbows and just being like i know mm. it's nora and every you know, beautiful sunrise or sunset that people are seeing. They're like, oh, you know, it's like, 
extra pink. I just know it's from Nora. Mm -hmm. and, um, baby birds and wildflowers and just, you know, so many, so many little beautiful things that just, we have to believe that it's her. Of course, because you know? if and we I, don't believe that, then what else, you know? Yeah, and I mean, I feel really strongly that it is. Mm -hmm. So she's, um, we just got so many signs, especially in those early days, but I really do feel like we see her every day and she's just such a strong little lady. Mm hmm they're so brave I just they're the bravest strongest most beautiful little things ever like I just you know I mm, I just mm, I think about her when she was in your belly and I just I just hate that that's what happened I hate it I hate yeah, it me too um, little Nora I truly yeah. believe that when we connect as mums on earth, mums and dads, you know, that our little babies upstairs, like have this little celebration. I probably said this to you. Like I just imagine mm, Nora yeah. and Amelia up there like, yay, look how mummies became friends. You know, like, they're just, they're totally celebrating right now. Yeah. God, I hope so. Hmm. Our July babies. I know. <laughs> I just don't mm. understand how it's October already. It doesn't make sense. Like, that's... I, I, I honestly, the first 10 weeks is a blur. Does, like, time it, has I, just been going so fast and yet, like, the, each individual day is so slow. Right? Yes. It's like... COVID made time really weird for everybody and I feel like this is like another layer of the same thing like I just don't feel like I'm experiencing time mm -hmm. in a normal and fashion it, at all yeah I agree we were the same in the hospital we were like that week felt like forever and yet went like that as well like yeah. it was like we forgot we had a home. We forgot we had animals. We You're like we live here now. I didn't leave the hospital for seven days. Like I went in to give birth on the Friday, and Millie, I went in at like six a.m. on the Friday morning, mm. and Millie passed away eight to nine p.m. the following Thursday. I didn't wow. have fresh fresh. I didn't leave that building that entire time. Like mm. talk about life and time not being of. <sighs> But, um, yeah, I feel like, I feel like there's nothing even, there's just shit. I just, I feel your heart and I feel your heaviness. And I feel like even though we are literally across the world from each other, I feel like we're right there with each other. Mm. And I mm -hmm. love that you reached out to me. I love that we have little J July angels together. Mm. Yeah, me too. I mean, I don't love it, but I love, no, you know, every, <laughs> every lost mom that I've connected with since Nora's birth, because I really do focus on, on like, it, the she birth. was born, you know, mm -hmm. um, almost every lost mom that I've connected with in that time has had some iteration of like, I wish I didn't know you mm -hmm. because if not for our baby's passing, there's no way that we ever would have connected, mm -hmm. you know? Absolutely. And it's, yeah, it's people all over. Um, there's, uh, I think there's another account on Instagram. It's called like the worst girl gang ever. Uh -huh. Yeah, you sent me that. Yeah. It's, it, it is. It is the worst girl. And I think they say, like, the worst girl gang ever with the best mamas ever, you know, whatever. But mm -hmm. it's like, it is. It's so shit. And I just hope that, you know, by sharing our stories, it starts to become. I, I didn't think people would listen unless perhaps they'd lost a baby. But I feel like people are listening 
like you, you know, like we did before the birth of our child, we, we research and we watch and we prepare Mm. for all the different labor scenarios or the parenting, you know, whatever. But, you know, I just, it needs to be talked about more because it's way more fucking common and not that it will be any less traumatic Mm -hmm. when in the scenario, because we still will think it's not going to happen to us. Um, You know, I love that potentially there's a movement of dads talking as well. You know, I got to interview a dad yesterday and I interviewed Dylan the other week and I had a dad reach out to me on Instagram thanking me for interviewing Aussie men because he's on the other side of Australia and he feels less alone by just hearing Mm. Dylan's story. And it's like, man, there's so many of us going through this and we just have to band together. We, you know, because we're Mm -hmm. not alone. And it's a very fucking lonely place if we don't connect and just stay in in contact with each other and share our babies. And I really, really, really hope that you start something to raise money for the cold cot because I will for sure share the shit out of that. Thank you. <laughs> mm. Yeah, I haven't formally um, put anything together for that yet. Um, Mm -hmm. I am signed up to do a run, which feels really crazy because I am, like, how many weeks postpartum am I? Ten? Yeah, I think we're... Ten-ish? Between ten and twelve-ish. Nine, nine, ten? No, yeah. Um, Eleven? I don't know. It's all blended into one. It's somewhere in there. We're somewhere. (laughs) We got organized enough to record this, and that's all. Yeah. Um, With different time zones, mind you. It's like midday here in Australia. (laughs) I know. I know. You're like yesterday. So so crazy. I love it. Um, But you're doing a run. I'm I'm doing a run. Um, I haven't run in like five years. I used to be quite the runner, and then I got injured and just kind of like let it go. Mm -hmm. Um, but I've signed up to do a run on October 15th, which is our holiday as last moms, which I had no idea was a thing, but it's, um, it's like, you know, October is like pregnancy and infant loss awareness month. It is. Uh October 15th is like the designated day. See, I didn't know that. We learn these things. I'm sure it's international. Mm-hmm. I know yeah. that October is an international thing, but yeah. Mm-hmm. There's lots of events and things on the 15th. Um, and as it happens, it's for an organization. They It's called the Butterfly Run. Um, mm-hmm. Butterflies are like the symbol for How beautiful. Um, loss, um, child and infant loss. Mm. And this is the first year that they're doing it in Kelowna which is kind of like the nearest bigger city close to us Mm -hmm. and it just feels like so serendipitous that like Nora was born this is the first year they're doing it um you know I've felt kind of I don't even know what the word is, adrift. I feel like I have nothing Mm -hmm. tethering me to reality right now. So Mm -hmm. um, having something to focus on training for, although I just just started running like two weeks ago. (laughs) My goodness. Yeah. How many kilometers is it? Oh, it's five. miles. Kilometers? Kilometers here, yeah. Yeah. Um, Yeah, so it's a 5K, um, which is, you know, chill, but... Not when you've had a C-section. I was about to say <laughs> recently. C- C-section with trauma. Let's add that. Mm, it's like mm, C-section with trauma, thing. no baby, it's grief, and you're going to run 5Ks. So just take it easy. <laughs> yeah. Um, but my mom is flying here to do it with us, which is Yay. wild and really special. Uh-huh. She's been doing triathlons the last few years. So oh, she's like, absolutely, I'm going to come run with you. Yeah. And Sean's parents are going to come. Sean's doing mm, it with it's us. So, yeah, and we've been doing a little bit of fundraising through that. Um, mm-hmm. And yeah, before Nora's first birthday next year, I'd like to have raised the money for the cold cut. So, yeah, I'm going to sit down that. and figure that out. Mm-hmm. Do it. That feels right. That feels good. I love totally. that idea. I think that's so special. Mm-hmm. 
Well, please do send me all the links for the fundraiser for your fun run. And once the cold cock comes in and I can add it to the show notes either now or later or whatever. And so this episode will be on Spotify for sure and YouTube. And when Spotify gets more views and things, they add it to other channels. But for sure, I know it'll be on those too. So oh, yeah. okay. I will add it all onto there. And Amazing. I'm sure that our friendship's only just started. So I know that... I'll see the photos when you do your run and all those things. And I just, Mm -hmm. I love and hate that we've connected, but I just want to thank you so much for sharing everything today. It's like such a vulnerable and sacred space and yeah, you've just done it with all your heart and I love that. And I thank you. Thank you for, yeah, thank you. And thank you for holding the space for not only yours and Dylan's and Millie's story but you know opening it up to the rest of us no matter how we found our way here Mm -hmm. um talking about it is so important and like you said there are so many people you know I've told I'm recording a podcast and you know it's on loss and people that are friends and people that you know kids are not they're just like oh I need you know I want to know more Mm. um and yeah I think although you I think most people in pregnancy just want to stay in that like happy pregnancy Mm -hmm. we all want to hear the positive outcome stories nobody is like searching out stillbirth or neonatal loss or Mm -mm. miscarriage stories or you know infant death or whatever have you um these stories are really important and our children still made their way here and I think they deserve just as much recognition and and to be shared and loved with just as many people as as living children Mm -hmm. um so yeah it's it's a really hard thing to open up and talk about but I think the more people do it the more people will feel like it's safe for them too and Mm -hmm. um I think you know if there's any any beauty that comes out of this maybe it's systemic change and maybe it's just culturally we learn how to hold people better through Mm -hmm. these experiences yeah yeah absolutely thanks so much Rochelle you're so welcome it's been amazing I just wish I could cuddle you through the through the screen (laughs) likewise yeah into the future (laughs) yeah yeah we'll we'll meet up somewhere in the world I'm mm. sure. Yeah. Mm. Well, okay. if there's nothing else you want to add, I think it's been perfect. It's been so lovely to hear about, you know, the way that you and Sean have carried on through and been strong and you've had the support of your friends, which I think is just massive, and your family mm. and doing the run and doing things in honour of Nora and seeing all the signs and they're just, you know, in in the midst of trauma you've been able to find those little tiny pieces of beauty Mm. one beautiful thing that's come out of it that I didn't add Mm -hmm. (laughs) like not many people know over here yet but um Sean and I did just get engaged last weekend so a little over a week ago yeah I proposed (laughs) you did not I did congratulations thank you go girl um so it's you know go you i I didn't want it to get thank you i didn't want it to get lost in everything that has gone on and everything that we're moving through right now but um i think it's just my mom was saying she's like it's not gonna get lost it's just part of your story Mm. and um it's something really beautiful that we can share with people and um yeah I don't know it's beautiful that's like, that's like you said like it, like you yeah it's like you said it you know she brought you guys together more she she mm-hmm. showed you how much love you have for each other yeah and like we you know we knew that and it wasn't 
that we needed to get married or that you know I thought about waiting or like waiting for Mm -hmm. Sean to ask or whatever but Mm -hmm. it was like I just wanted him to know that Mm -hmm. we've been through this thing and it's like we're so solid oh I love it yeah it's amazing it's so good so that feels like a good thing to end on yay perfect ending we have a secret that not everyone knows as well I know right (laughs) (laughs) well the podcast will be launched not this Sunday but the one after so you might need to tell some people (laughs) I might or might not I'll just be like oh you should listen to the podcast (laughs) yes and then you'll know if they listen to the end because 100% yeah even though it's been like yeah it's been like two and a half hours (laughs) I know. I told you. We can't stop talking once we talk about our babies. Mm, mm -hmm. Mm. Okay. Well, thank you so much. And um, we'll definitely stay in touch. Yeah. Sounds good. Thank you so much. Okay. Bye, lovely. Bye. Bye.